Yoga wear maker Lululemon is trying to stretch its image and appeal more to men. They're taking aim at bankers, traders, other Wall Street jocks in an effort to persuade men to wear a brand that has been long associated with women. Lulu shares they're down this year by about 9%. So is this push into menswear going to be enough to help boost it? Bloomberg contributor and marketing guru Jeff Hazlett and John Niffen, he's longtime retail equity researcher and founder of J. Rogers Niffen Worldwide Enterprises, are here to discuss. Now, obviously, the problems at Lululemon are broader here. It's had some quality control issues. But, Jen, as somebody who watches retail, they're so women-focused. Can you make that turn? Can you make that expansion into the male category? In a word, no. <laughs> but they're going to try, and we'll see what kind of growth they get. But, you know, I mean, there's Nike, there's Under Armour, there's Russell. If you're a guy, do you really care that it's high performance when it's 30% more expensive? And in my opinion, it's going to be a tough sell. Um, I'm worried about Lulu for other reasons. Like you said, the management changes. I think the growth's going to be harder to get. I mean, now you walk the mall, what? You see everybody selling yoga wear. Macy's has got it. Nordstrom's has got it. American Eagle has it. Athleta, Gap Body, you name it, they're trying to sell yoga wear. Well, they're actually one of the most copied brands and items out there. Now, what's interesting is they've already been selling men's clothing since 1998. Most people don't know that. It's only 12% of their total market, but, you know, they've been out there selling it. I think the difficulty is not whether, because I went out and asked a bunch of guys today, because I found this out, I was going to talk about this. So I went out to the Twitter feed and started asking, and they said, it's not so much the fact that it's a woman's brand, but the fact that it costs so much. For them, it's more like a luxury brand they can go out and pay $64 for a pair of shorts but they can go get those shorts from Nike for 24 and that was the big thing for them now, a lot of the guys like the anti stink you know that they have in terms of they they said it just wears better it fits better there was all those kind of things but they're kind of a crossover brand they're not a sport brand they're really a luxury brand and if you look at their square footage in the retail side they have the third best producer the only one that produces better than them Tiffany and Apple per square foot in well, the store. Well, isn't that a function, though, of the price? Oh, well, I without mean, question, that price. Right? Absolutely. Just getting back to what Jan was saying. Yeah. I think it's going to be tough for them to make the transition a very crowded field. I confess I own some. I do like the stuff. <laughs> it's still too expensive for the market. And I do own the anti-stink. I don't think most guys mind stinking, so I'm not sure that that's <laughs> right. a big selling feature. And I really think they're going to have a hard time getting the attention to drive enough of it to matter, even in its own separate store. I just don't see it happening. And like you said, they've been selling stuff for men forever. And as we all know, hasn't done that well for them. Yeah, the anti stinks always important when you're doing the downward dog. I will tell you that. Just given the, that's just <laughs> yeah, a, you're a, a real big downward plus. dog kind of guy, Yeah, right? getting me into at the position four. of downward yeah. dog is the real problem, not so much of whether or I'm going to buy it or not. More the yeah, getting, getting me out, out. exactly. I, I want to ask you guys too, because at the same time that we have Lululemon trying to market to men, we have Under Armour trying to get into the women's business. Now, if Lulu can't cross over one way, can Under Armour cross over much, the other way? Much, much easier for them Why? to do that. One much. tradition. I mean, it's been a traditional in terms of being able to do that. And you can look brand after brand. Levi's, I can go into every kind of apparel there is that's been a, more of a men's brand over time that's gone over to the females. It's much difficult to get men to switch to women's brands. Sexism is alive and well. Men won't go that way. Women will buy guy stuff all forever. It's just always been that way. And unfortunately, it's probably always going to be that way. All right, so Jeff, you're, you're, you're a marketing guru. They've been trying to sell clothes to men. They have been selling clothes to men since 1998, as you point out. That's a long time, right? Uh, 15 years, I did that math in my head. So, uh, you know, what, when are they going to just realize it's not worth it if we can't get it above 12%? Yeah, but it's still a good growth market for them. If they can make it go, even if they pick up a couple of points, that's still a lot of money. And again, the margins are pretty good on this product and we said if it's a luxury brand the margins are much better than say Under Armour which is really out there slugging out or Nike so it's very good for them and it's all upsell now what I concerned about is they've had this controversy as we all know about the see-through pants which should have been a no-brainer I mean you should have caught this in your production line you should have caught this like in someone your... should have known someone, someone should have Tried them on it. and tested like them out. Like inspected by Inspector 16, they're supposed to see that kind so of thing. So what worries me, do they have the same kinds of processes in place when it comes to picking new products or rolling out new products? As a marketer, I would do extensive studies. I would test the market. I would go to different stores and see if it's going to work first. I don't know with the management change that they're making and these kinds of problems, they're like really stupid stuff that should be very simple. Well, to the management changes, and Jan mentioned this, you're concerned about uh, that turnover, Christine Day, leaving the company. Who do you want to see 
in charge of Lululemon? And even if you don't have a particular person in mind, what co I mean, what direction should the company be going right This now? company needs to grow and it needs to have its supply lines work and it needs to have its right. quality control work and it's growing faster, too fast probably to sustain all that. So they need a real good person in the control side, but they have to have great marketing and Sherry, Rob, or Sherry uh, Watterson's gone too. Yep. So it's not just Christine Day leaving. They need to replace both of those people with strong operational and strong marketing. And man, that's hard right now. Is there somebody out there who can and, do the job? Oh, there's always somebody, there's always somebody out there. There's always great talent, there's lots of great them? talent. You well, can, and they can find them. And, it's a, and, and overall, it's a good brand. Let's don't knock it. I mean, you talk to people in Canada, Canada, especially where they're from, they love this brand, and everybody that goes and buys this product loves this product. My wife, others, they love this product. So they've got some real stickiness without question. They just need to get their mojo back and get some of that operational stuff taken care of. But they desperately need the growth, which is why they need this men's business, because given the multiples they carry, if the growth slows down because of competition on the women's side, it's got to come from someplace. I think it's going to be hard to get it out of men's. Well, they're going to need to find a really good retail marketer, a real good retail operator and that's what they really need here and, and you know day was a good one she came from Starbucks ran Asia did a great job and she, you know and even with the controversy she's leaving she's cashing out 25 million dollars in her pocket there's a lot of a lot of upside for her but they really got to find somebody who can really get in this day-to-day -day. and they're gonna have to look at changing a little bit of that culture they mm -hmm. speak in a different language and if you're gonna be marketing the men you know <laughs> they have some short language that they use well, internally that doesn't necessarily appeal to men Jeff you're a macho guy, marketing guru. I don't know. Maybe they should try to hire you. They should st strap some of this stuff on me. I'm ready. I'm in. I'm, okay, I'm guys, in. after the I'm show, in. I'm metro. I'm out. metro. I'm, we're having a little yoga class after yeah, after yeah. the show today. I'll be there. All right. Thank you so I'll, much. I'm going to send one of my staff people. Jeff Hazlett, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in, and Jan Niffen uh, for a lively discussion of Lululemon. Appreciate it. Oh yeah.